Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, let's wait for a couple of more minutes since it's day one. Uh, we'll, we'll start in approximately two to three minutes. And thank you very much for dialing in, guys. You hear me? Yeah, I, I can see that you're connected to audio now. Yeah. So yeah, I can uh, hear now. Well, okay. good morning to all. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Just give me one more minute. One more cabinet is dialing in. That's fine. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, warm welcome to Fusion HCM training by InnoGeeks. Today is the first session for your batch. Uh, and this is Prasad. I'll be your instructor for, your, for this particular course. I have around 15 plus years of real time work experience. And I'm currently working as an architect at a top US based product company. And coming to my experience in HCM and ERP Cloud, I've, um, I'm working in this space for uh, close to six to seven years now. And yeah, I also have a very good experience as a technical uh, plus OIC consultant. That's about me. Uh, and before we get started, uh, if you guys don't mind, uh, just just give a brief introduction about yourself. Like, what is your experience level and what are your expectations from this particular course? So that we all are on the same page as we progress in the course. Yeah, I've and a couple of pointers. I've, by default, you will be muted when you join the meeting. That doesn't mean you cannot talk. It's it's done only to avoid the background noise. At any point in time in the session, you can unmute, uh, ask ask a question, and go back go back on mute. Please, Shiva. Yeah. Uh, thank you. A uh, very good morning to you, Prasad, and good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm a MCA graduate, and I have been developing trivial applications. Partly, I have been a trainer also. I'm also an independent consultant. Of late, I have developed some interest in the cloud market. I could see uh, a number of opportunities in the market cloud or data science. Uh, somehow I picked up some interest in the cloud market. Basically, that's my interest to uh, shift my career to the cloud market. So then, and then I realized Oracle Cloud has got uh, also a good market share. So that's all. 
uh, the, the the interest behind you know taking up a course like this. Thank you. Okay. Anybody interested to go on? Well, that's fine. Uh, I yeah, I know some of you uh, uh, from other batch. Uh, yes, you can you can just drop a line in the chat, uh, and we and we know so that we know your experience levels. Okay, let's get started, guys. Hey, hey, yeah. hey! I'm I'm pressure that I can go. I'm Raj. Um, so I have uh, um, close to 20 years of experience in IT. I started my career with the Java, then I get into data everything, then uh, I was in the Oracle e-business with um, R12. Okay. Now I'm just slowly transitioning myself into Oracle Cloud. So, and this is my first um, exposure to um, HCM Cloud. Earlier I was working only to some extent on ACM, but mostly on a customization, not on the core functional consultant. I am a technical consultant. So I just want to yeah. gain knowledge on Oracle Cloud, especially on HCM. That's my ask. Yeah. Thanks, Sandraj. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's move on, guys. Yes. Please go on. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Helfried and I am in Canada. I live in Ottawa here. It's a capital city. And I'm working with SAP right now in one of the company called PC President Choice, where I'm working with their SAP backend. And mm -hmm. uh, now I want to shift to the uh, cloud or HCM. There are a lot of jobs here in this market. So just yeah. want to go into it. And that's the reason and my purpose is to learn, you know, good hands on practice. Also, I have an HR background. I'm MBA in HR. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, the human resources capital consultant in India when I was in India. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, I Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, let's move on, guys. Uh, and this is what I have on agenda for today. I'm not sure if he if he'll be able to cover all the points. Yeah, well, we'll see how far we can progress. And a couple of pointers before before I proceed with the session. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, everyone is on mute. Uh, that doesn't mean you cannot talk or you cannot ask a question. Yes, but if you but if it is something that can wait, I will leave out a good five to ten minutes of time only for questions at the end of the session. So if you can hold on with your question, well and good. Otherwise, uh, if you want something to be clarified right at that point in time, feel free to unmute yourself, ask a question, and put yourself back on mute, please. Only to avoid background noise, nothing more than that. And I'll go at a moderate pace. Uh, please do let me know if I'm uh, if if you feel like I'm going too fast or too slow. I'm open to adjust my pace. And yes, it's a mix of participants here. I know some of you, uh, some of your background, yeah, some of you have some exposure to Fusion applications at least, but some of you are absolutely new to Fusion applications. Okay, so I'll, I'll go with an assumption that you don't know anything about Fusion. Uh, probably it might, a session might seem, or might not be quite helpful for uh, some of you who already have spent some time in Fusion applications. But as we progress in the course, we will be going deep into HCM concepts, okay? And uh, yes, we'll, we'll first talk about what exactly is Oracle Fusion applications and how does it, uh, how did it get that name called Fusion in first place? And we'll talk about the product families or the various offerings that Oracle has in the cloud space, okay? So we'll we'll talk, we'll talk about financials, HCM, SCM, and on what all other product families does it offer, and what modules are available in it so that you know what, what exactly Oracle offers in cloud. And uh, yes, of course, the focus would be only on the HCM part. And we'll have a brief look at uh, ERP cloud architecture or HCM cloud rather. It, it's one and the same, uh, whether it's a ERP or HCM, I should, I should rather change it to Oracle Fusion Cloud. That would be more appropriate for this. Yeah, we'll look at the architecture of the cloud application. I strongly believe that before you learn any, any application, uh, whether it's technical or functional, you understand what the application is made up of. And when I say what is it, what it is made up of, uh, you have to understand what do you see on the front end, what makes up the middle layer, and what is in the back end, even though you're going to be a functional consultant. And then uh, as you as you learn this course, as we progress in the course, or uh, when you talk to uh, some of your colleagues, you might be hearing these terms quite often, like on-prem, IAAS, PaaS, or SaaS. 
right? So I'll try to clarify what these terms really mean. And, and I also try to give you some examples around that. Okay, so that you exactly know what, uh, what is a fusion HCM cloud by the end of it. Okay, so it's basically a SaaS application that Oracle offers in cloud. Okay, and we'll talk about uh, upgrade cycle of the fusion application. We don't really need to discuss this on the on day one, but I just want to point out that the access, uh, the application access that we give you, uh, yes, that instance will be of our latest configuration. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, I'll give you a high level overview of HCM. Uh, HCM. Like I, I, I basically talk about what are the the human, uh, or what are the HCM process that uh, uh, that are basically involved in a company. And we will also see what modules does Oracle offers in Fusion HCM Cloud to cover those uh, human resource processes. Okay, and I'll give you a very high level of overview. Uh, I'll give you a very high level overview of the course content. Okay, so let's get started, guys. And uh, what exactly is a Fusion Cloud applications? It's basically a, an, an integrated suite of business applications that Oracle offers. And uh, when we say Fusion Cloud application, it's not a single application. It's made up of multiple product families. And what exactly is a product family or offering? It's, it's, it's these modules that you see, or it's these uh, ones that are highlighted in red that you see. These are basically called as a product families or offerings. So any client wants to implement Oracle Cloud, they would they, they can pick and choose. They don't, they, very rarely clients implement all of them. Each and every client will pick up and implement only the modules that they need. Okay, so some clients might implement only HCM. Uh, some clients might implement financials plus uh, HCM. Some clients might implement only the financials cloud. Okay, so Oracle offers multiple product families in cloud. It's made up of financials, HCM, SCM, procurement, PPM, etc. And depending on uh, depending on your business uh, depending on your business needs, you can go ahead and implement. When I say you, uh, I'm, I'm talking about it from client standpoint. You can go ahead and implement the offerings that you that your business would need. Okay, and yes, uh, each offering, as you can see, is made up of modules. Okay, so if you take the, the case of financials, you have GL, AP, AR, fixed assets, etc. And if you come to core HR, or if you come to HCM, you've got a global HR payroll. You've got goals management, performance management, talent review, et cetera. So each product family, and when it comes to SCM, you've got, you've got SCM related modules and, and so on. So each product family you're offering is a modular suite of applications. You've got modules within. And even when a client implements a particular product family or offering, that doesn't mean they use all the, all the applications that are available within or all the modules. Uh, some clients might might implement only core HR. Some clients might implement all of them. Some clients might implement a mix of those modules available in HCM, and that's how it goes. Clients will implement the product families that they need, and even within a product family, they will only implement the modules that they are interested in or they need for their business needs. So, if if a client ha already has a a, a payroll uh, vendor who is running the payroll on their behalf, and they they might want to implement only a core HR module and they might want to only manage the employees who hire and retire them in, uh, on, in HCM. But uh, when it comes to payroll, they might rely on, uh, on an external party. Okay, so it all depends on, it all boil, boils down to what a client wants from a Fusion application. Okay, and one good thing with this is, uh, since it's a SaaS application, you only pay for what you use. So that's, that's again, uh, something that you have to uh, bear in mind. Okay, and as uh, Fusion applications, it's an integrated suite of applications, not made up of a single uh, product family or offering, but you've got multiple of them and each product family has uh, modules. And, and another very important point about uh, Oracle Fusion applications is, and what makes it unique is this, that these modules can talk to each other. Okay, modules within a product family can talk to each other. So for example, you can, uh, you can, uh, maybe create a transaction in AP and AR, push it to GL. And similarly, and, and not just that, even the modules across offerings can talk to each other. So you run a payroll and then you can push those general entries or, or uh, accounting transactions into, uh, into general ledger as well. Okay, so it's like these 
applications are engineered to work together. And even when you do something in SCM, and then you can, you can uh, once you have closed the sales order, it, it gets interfaced to GL as well, right? So our modules, not just from, uh, not just whether the product family can talk to each other, but modules across product families also can talk to each other. And they're engineered to work, uh, work together. Okay, so, uh, so that's a, a basis of the fusion applications, and that what and that's what makes this uh, a fusion cloud applications uh, quite famous as such. Okay, they are engineered to work together, and uh, for example, if you have to uh, create a ledger and push uh, capture the records accounting transactions in there, you don't have to define one ledger per uh, per the per implementation or one per payroll. You you define a ledger once, and you don't you don't have to define it every time you want to. Or do something in a sub ledger modules. You just define it once, and and from all other applications, you can push uh, transactions to it. Okay, that's just an example. And uh, these modules and the the features that are available in these modules are, are built in such a way that you will be able to uh, meet or or design your enterprise or model your enterprise to meet uh, to meet the legal and management requirements. Okay, so whatever uh, the requirements are uh, from a legal or enterprise standpoint, uh, so it could be accounting requirements, it could be it could be uh, reporting requirements, right? So these modules or the products are defined in such a way, or or uh, they are robust enough uh, that you can model your enterprise around it. It doesn't matter which industry you are from, uh, whether you are from a manufacturing industry or whether you are from a, a life science industry, it doesn't really matter. These modules have enough features available in them which will cater to uh, any type of a client. Okay, and before we go into architecture, let me show you a quick look at the Fusion application and let me show you how it looks like. In the Fusion application, uh, yes, once you enroll in the course, I'll give you access to a Fusion Cloud application. And let me show you from the login page. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to log into Oracle Cloud applications here, Oracle Fusion applications, and I'm trying to log in as a HCM implementation user. Okay, I'm trying to log in as a HCM implementation user. You enter your username and password and you sign into it. So what is this? Uh, so this is basically a Fusion Cloud application. Whenever a client wants to uh, implement a fusion cloud application what oracle does is it installs this application in one of the data centers closest to the client location if client is based out of uh, india they might probably uh, locate the data center closest to them usually that's the case and and in that data center they will install this application on one of the servers and they give uh, and what, what they do is they pass on the url of the application and the username and password so they create one root user or one user uh, based on the uh, Oracle Cloud account name and they pass on the details to the client. What do, what do the clients do? They access this software or they use the software as a service. So if you think of this, this is basically a software as a service product. So Oracle has built this software called Fusion Applications. And of course, within it, you can enable what offerings you want to use and you use it as a service. So that's why it's called as a SaaS software as a service product or a SaaS product. And uh, yes, all you need to access and work in a SaaS application, either either do as an implementation user or as an end user is to is a working a browser or a browser with a working internet connection. That's all you need. So you log into the application by accessing the URL and you type in the username and password. And once you sign in, uh, this is what you see. You see the application homepage with a default look and uh, look and feel. So you have a default theme applied in the application, and of course you can change the look and feel of the uh, of the application as well. You can update the logo, you can change the messages, or you can change the look and feel of this as well. So this is basically called as a homepage layout. Okay, and if you are probably coming from EBS background, eBusiness suite background, this user interface would look completely different from what you have what you might have been used to right so you have something called as forms in e-business suite you don't have that uh, that in erp cloud or hcm cloud or, or, or fusion cloud in general you all you have is a pages built like this it's a it's a oracle jet framework that's used to build these pages okay and how do you access them so if you want to do something in the hcm cloud application so yeah i've flowed in as implementation user but 
let's say uh, an employee or an end user has logged into the application if they want to hire an employee what do they do they go into a respective module and when they go into a, a specific module of their choice they will be able to see the work areas available within it again i'll be spending a uh, quite a bit of time tomorrow or uh, and and i'll be focusing exclusively on the navigation part okay so i'm just trying to give you a a, a sneak peek into how the application looks like okay so you uh, as an end user or as an implementer you get into a task that you have to work on and if you're supposed to hire an employee or, or if that is what you want to do you go into my client groups and you click on new person and then you go ahead with the task okay so what do you do you go ahead and uh, pick up pick up an, a task of your choice uh, if you want to hire an employee you go in there and that will take you to a page uh, where you can uh, start filling in uh, the employee information okay so you can enter employee information personal uh, and you can enter assignment related information compensation and then uh, employee will be uh, yes and you and and at the end of it you can submit a request and again there's something called as workflow that you can enable so if you want a uh, a request like this to run through an approval cycle usually you would be required to run run those requests through a, a approval cycle so you can enable approvals run them through the approval cycle and then and then once a request is approved employee gets hired in the application okay so yes you the application looks like this you have uh, a pages that look uh, that look like what you're seeing on screen and what you do is you get into the modules of your choice pick up a work area and, and go about doing your job and if you look at this, uh, so this is this is how a Fusion Cloud application looks like. And if you go back to the architecture of it, a Fusion Cloud application, any application, if you think of it's it's basically made up of uh, three bits. So what do you see on the front end? What makes up the user interface? And of course, uh, and uh, what makes up the back end? So where does uh, where does the data get stored? So whatever you do in the application. Or whatever transactions you create if you hire an employee that must be saved somewhere in the back end right so what is that so uh so we we need to talk about a user interface a database and what exactly supports those applications or what exactly supports the application in the middle end okay the middle layer so yes if you if you take the case of e-business suit e-business suit you will have a, a form set the front end you have a database at the back end oracle database and in the middle layer, you've got uh, you've got uh, application server, form server, report server, etc. Right, so that's what you you typically have in EBS. In the case of ERP cloud, also you have a similar use uh, similar uh, a three layered architecture. But uh, what makes up the user interface? In the user interface, you have the product families, and uh, those product families will have those individual pages built uh, built for for such applications. So this is how the user interface looks like. Okay, no more forms, no more, uh, no more shortcuts. You cannot, you cannot switch responsibilities and all that stuff. Okay, so anything you want to do, you have to get into a, a specific task, and you have to, uh, yeah, you have to go, you have to proceed with it. And if you if you look at the back end, yes, you still have Oracle database supporting in the back end, and you do have schemas for each application, and you also have a tables created with them. But the biggest difference between uh, the cloud and uh, on-prem applications were uh, such as EBS is, yes, in, in the case of EBS or any other application, if it's on-premise, you might probably have access to the database, right? So, and what that means is you can connect to the database of the application from uh, a database tools like SQL Developer or a Tor. And, uh, and if you think about it from a technical a consultant standpoint, that means yes you have you have a very good control uh, of the application meaning you can build any component that you want you can if you want to extract something you can write a, a, a plsql block quickly compile it and do the extraction part and not just that if you yes if you gain access to database that gives you a good amount of control on the application but with cloud applications that is not possible you don't get access to a database and that changes the life uh, or that changes the way uh, implementations are done in cloud when compared to when compared to uh, a fusion when compared to on prem applications so yes if you want to uh, if you want to do something if you want to say query the tables that are storing the information that uh, about about the actions that you perform within the application 
you have to go into a specific screen within the application. Uh, you have to go into reports and analytics work area. And from there, you have an option to run the queries if you need. If you hire an employee, and after you hire an employee, if you want to see uh, where that information is stored, what you can do is you can go into, uh, if you go into tools, you do have an option to go into uh, reports and analytics work area. And if you get into it, you do have an option to create a, a dummy data model. We'll see that in detail uh, when we do uh, our BAP reports, uh, technical concept. Yeah, you can create a dummy data model and you can uh, run a simple query in that. You can, you can basically run select queries in that particular screen. And that will help you to just basically query what is uh, getting stored in a backend or what is stored in the backend. But you cannot connect to this application server. You cannot connect to uh, you cannot connect to the file server or you cannot connect to the uh, database of this application. The only way you can run a queries is, yes, you go into reports and analytics and you run the queries there. And that is where uh, integrations are gaining uh, significance uh, because of the limitations that you have in cloud. Any customizations you want to achieve, you would, you would probably be relying on the integration since you don't get access to a database. Okay, that's a different story. We don't have to talk about it in a HCM session. And uh, yes, uh, the, yes, you do have a, a user interface built using Oracle Jet Framework. You have those pages or a work areas built in, and those pages look like this, what you're seeing on screen. And again, I'll talk about the navigation options tomorrow. I'll talk about each option that you see here uh, in quite detail in tomorrow's session. And uh, you do have database, but you don't get access to it. Uh, you can basically run a query on the database, but that's a maximum that you can do. Okay, you cannot even create a table in this database. Uh, you, you can just query it. And what makes up a middle layer of the Fusion applications is, it's, it's not a single uh, uh, WebLogic server, or it's it's not uh, just a one one or two servers that make up a middle layer. Instead, it's a, it's a fusion of components that support the application. So for this Fusion application to work the way it works today, it has these many components working in the back end. Okay, so to give you some examples, like if you say, uh, say for example, you want to uh, you want to build a BIP report. If you want to build a BIP report, if you want to uh, say do or uh, generate some report out of the application for some reporting purposes, uh, it could be internal reporting or external reporting. What do you do? You go into tools, reports and analytics work area. And you click on browse catalog. And that will take you into, into a BA server. So this is basically called as a business intelligence server. And this particular server supports uh, supports or, or helps you with the reporting requirements in the cloud application. Any reporting you want to do in, from the application, you would be doing it with the help of a business intelligence server. And that's what you see here. And that's what you see here, right? A business intelligence. Uh, and in a similar fashion, so uh, you when you when you do some transactions in HCM, when you do some transactions in HCM, you create a job or create a position or hire an employee, you might want those transactions to run through an approval cycle. And uh, you have a component here, a SOVA suite and a BPM suite to support those approvals in the back end. And after you create a BAP report here, if you want uh, your end user to be able to run that report, what you do is, uh, you have something called as uh, ESS job here. So you would you would first register that as a job in the application, and you will ask your user to run it from a schedule process screen. So in, in tools, you have an option called schedule process. It's not enabled on the springboard, but if you go in here. So if you want to run any job in the application, you can, uh, from tools, you can go into schedule process screen, and you will be able to run that job. So, but, but uh, what, what, what supports this particular uh, functionality in the back end, you have something called as enterprise scheduler service. Okay, so you have, I think it's, yeah, you have Oracle enterprise scheduler. So what, so even though these are all uh, sound, uh, even though these sound are too technical, so you have uh, many components working in the middle layer to make the uh, application or to give all that functionality to that application. Yes, you should be able to build the reports. You should be able to run the transactions through approval cycle, submit the jobs, and and you should uh, there should be some service in the back end to support the authentication as well, right? Uh, what, what's the first thing that we did? We signed into the application, right? So, but but uh, who is validating that? 
or there is an identity service working in the backend which helps you with that or which helps the application with that. So since you have too many components in the middle layer, which are fusing together to make the application work the way it works today, uh, that's why it's called as a fusion cloud application. So if someone asks you, why is it called fusion in first place? That's because you have many components in the middle layer supporting the application to make it work the way it works. Okay, that's about architecture. And you might be hearing these terms quite often, uh, on-prem, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Fusion HCM Cloud, uh, which, is, which is a topic for this particular training, is a SaaS application. And what does a SaaS mean? It means software as a service. So if client says, I want to, I want to uh, create an instance of, or I need an instance of Fusion HCM, as I said, uh, what does the Oracle do? It will install the application in one of the data center closest to the closest to the client location. There can be some exceptions to that, uh, but usually it works that way. And and what do they do? They pass on the URL to you, and you are basically accessing that software or using that software as a service. And uh, and you pay for what you use. If you think of it from a client standpoint, uh, so the moment you create or register a user in the in the application, yes, uh, that means you have to pay a bill to Oracle. So that's like that's like your postpaid bill that you pay uh, for, for your broadband or a mobile. Okay, so yes, you get, and and in the case of software as a service, what's the main advantage uh, with this? There are two two main advantages for that. A, you only pay for what you use. B, you're not responsible for anything in here. So if you do, if you, if you look at the the way, or if you look at the IT landscape of companies a few years back any application they want to install what they have to do they have to do all the hard work so uh, if if they probably have to get an ebs application or any application what do they usually do so they buy the required infrastructure they buy the servers they buy the networking capability storage etc and they also had to hire a maintenance team um, made up of dbas network administrators etc and and they have to get them to install those applications not just install them they they also need to maintain them as well and, and they need to keep them up to date uh, in, in terms of from, from various perspectives, from security, upgrade, et cetera. So on-prem, everything is a headache of a client. And uh, yes, you also make a huge significant upfront cost or upfront investments or because you need to buy those servers or everything that your application needs. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's how the typical on-premise applications work. But uh, what are the disadvantages with it? Uh, whether you like it or not, once you have bought them, yeah, it's up to you whether you use it or not, but you have already spent a amount on that. And everything should be maintained by the clients, meaning uh, apart from running your business, this would also take up your some of your uh, some of your uh, time and effort. But if you if you go to the other side of the of the uh, uh, prism, you would you have software as a service wherein uh, when I say managed by provider, so you could replace this provider with Oracle. So if you take, uh, if you start using Fusion HCM Cloud application, you need not worry about the version of the application. Uh, you need not worry about the update schedule. You need not worry about uh, who maintains it or who installs it or or if application goes down for whatever reason. Uh, you also have those timelines given by Oracle by which time it it will bring it up. So you're you're basically not responsible for anything in if it's a SaaS. It's just that you get software as a service, you use it and you pay for what you use. And in between these two extremes, uh, you've got two more options uh, called platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Platform as a service, uh, yes, you might, the clients might have a requirement to do some build, uh, uh, to build some applications uh, based on their uh, requirements. And for them to be able to do the build activity, they need to have a platform for it. Meaning they need to have, uh, they need to have the required infrastructure in place, a uh, plus, uh, plus uh, the, the runtime or the middleware layer installed on the operating system, right? Uh, so if you need to, if you want to take some platform as a service product, so what are some of the examples of platform as a service products? Uh, you all, typically the integration products fall under this category. So when you have to uh, implement SaaS applications, you will have, a, so you, you would be doing the configuration part you will talk to client uh, you will understand what the business requirements are you will configure the functional modules uh, but to make them work the way you want uh, to make them work as per the business requirement and you might uh, 
yes, uh, since we cover technical skills also as part of this training, if if you have to build a basic report or, or a HCM extract, you will be able to help yourself as well. Yeah, but for that SaaS uh, implementations to go on, uh, sometimes uh, because of the restrictions you have in cloud, you might you another team might might keep working on 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 the sidelines okay and that is basically called as an integrations team and they might be using some products like oic or sova ces and uh, they might be using such past products to build the components or to build the applications that are required for uh, SaaS implementations it need not be applications it can be integrations as well if you take uh, infrastructure as a service pla and platform as a service the only difference between them is or if you if you look at uh, who manages what in the case of infrastructure as a service, they just give you the infrastructure. I mean, when I say they, uh, it, 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 it's a vendor. It can be OCI, it can be, it can be Oracle uh, through Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or it can be Amazon, or it can be uh, yeah, AWS or Azure. Right? So these are basically the cloud infrastructure as a service providers. So you can get only the, if you only need infrastructure, you don't even need, uh, need them to install OS and all that. So that's that's basically a yes product and uh infrastructure only means a server storage uh, and, and the four parts that you see here if it's a platform you also have a few more bits are taken care by oracle or uh, yeah if it's if it's oracle that you're working with so if someone asks you what these products really mean you now know uh, know the answer to it on-prem the, the the traditional way of doing things you buy the servers you install the applications you maintain them uh, when I say you clients, uh, in SaaS, it's it's other way around. Uh, it's everything is done by Oracle. You just get a URL, you use it. As simple as that. And Fusion Cloud application, which is uh, which which is what we are interested in, it's basically software as a service. And this is what I've listed down here. So uh, uh, advantages or co uh, comparison between on-prem and cloud. Cloud, everything is an advantage. On-prem, yeah. Everything you do in on-prem has a disadvantage to it. You have a huge upfront investment cost involved, maintenance efforts. Uh, you have to you have to look after the support. You have to yeah. There, there are n number of things, n number of downsides with on-prem, and you can overcome all of them by using cloud. But the only downside with cloud is yes, the customization scope would be less when compared to on-prem applications. If it's an on-prem application, I can make or I can customize the application to make it work the way I want it. But when it comes to cloud, it might be possible only to a certain extent. Because when you say cloud, uh, the vendors do not give you uh, full access to the application. They give you access. They, gi they give you only a controlled access or a, or a limited access to the application. Okay, that's the only thing that you need to be aware of. And yes, when it comes to upgrade schedule, uh, if you look at the application, if you look at the application, and if you click on the drop down, click on about this application, it tells you what application, or uh, what's the version that you are using. Okay. So if someone asks you what version of Fusion HCM application you are learning, you have to say that it's release 13. Okay, so it's release 13 that you are learning. And what version of it? A 21D. So the first two characters uh, represent the year that you are in. So we are in 2021, so that's why 21. And this uh, D represents the quarter that you are in. Okay, in every year you have four quarters, right? So Jan to March is first quarter, April to June is second quarter, and so on. So starting from Jan till December, you have four quarters in a year. So the way applications are named is, uh, is this, so it's, uh, first two digits of a year and uh, the quarter number in which that particular version is released. So every quarter Oracle releases a new version of the application. And uh, see, we are in uh, we are in November 2021. So that's why uh, the application version that you're seeing here is 21D. When uh, when to come 2022 uh, January, you will have a new version of the application released by Oracle. And what would be the version number for that? It would be 22. A. And when you reach uh, April, you will get an, another new version of the application that would be called 22B. Okay, so every year you have four versions released, year number plus the quarter number. Okay, so 21D, after that it will be 22A, 22B, 22C, 22D. And then it will be 23A, 23B, so it goes on that way. So 
what does this mean to you as a client or, or as an as an implementation specialist uh, sometimes not sometimes yeah whenever you get a new release there will be some features that will be that will be deprecated and there will be some uh, new features that get added to the application okay so uh, as an implementation user or as an end user you have to be on top of them uh, because and and what exactly has changed in that particular version yes you will have a detailed release notes from oracle and and that tells you what exactly has changed and if you if, if there's a new cool feature from oracle you could probably explore it either as an implementer or as an end user and see how how you can help clients with that with that okay so that's about a version and, and another a very important point about this is so in case of uh, in case of on prem applications clients had an option to choose when they want to upgrade see if i'm if i'm an ebs uh, uh, user or if i'm a, a client using e business suite application since that is on premise application i can decide when i want to upgrade and what usually uh, clients do is yeah uh, they often uh, take uh, take a uh, a cautious approach so whenever uh, oracle releases a new product a new version they don't immediately upgrade themselves they wait they want to wait for that new product to stabilize because initially whenever you release any product there would be bugs in there right so that they are uh, they are unavoidable no matter how much how much testing you do so when uh, when a new product is released or a new version is released uh, clients have an option to choose when they want to move to it but that's not the case with a fusion cloud application every quarter we we uh, oracle releases a new version and you cannot say that i want to stay in 21 day because everything is working in the application uh, uh, that's required for my business you will definitely have to upgrade to 22a uh, when when the version comes out uh, and at max uh, when when your application is about to be upgraded you receive a communication from it uh, when i say you uh, a contact point from the client side will receive a communication if you have any significant milestone uh, maybe you have an uat planned or a go live plan for uh, for a particular way or maybe for a couple of countries then you can ask them to hold on with the upgrade uh, in the production instance for a couple of weeks maximum that's that's a, that's something that you can request oracle but you cannot definitely go back and say that uh, hey boss I, I i love this application and everything is working uh, in this particular version uh, uh, seamlessly for me and i want to stay here for for uh, a year or so that's not possible okay that's something that you have to be aware of because sometimes my client ask uh, clients might ask you do i have to upgrade now or can i wait uh, you don't have an option to wait okay and uh, yes uh, uh, whenever uh, whenever oracle wants to release some new feature they uh, they typically plug in those uh, features into a new release or a new version and they release it <clears throat> but sometimes what will happen uh, there might be something uh, there might be some bug or there might be some patch that needs to be applied and that might <clears throat> and that might not wait uh, till uh, that there could be a scenario that it cannot wait for 3 months because you you get a next release uh, in only 3 months time right so in such cases they might also do some patch fixes or a bug fixes and when they do it uh, they they do let uh, they do intimate the clients uh, well in advance uh, uh, so sometimes there might be a downtime uh, required or sometimes uh, there might not be a uh, no downtime required so what does a downtime required means to uh, install that patch uh, they might have to take down the application for uh, for from anywhere between few minutes to few hours okay some patches can be applied uh, even while the application is up and running okay so that's about it and yes when it comes to hcm uh, yes uh, if if you look at the hcm business process in general in general so it usually starts with a hire cycle and it ends with retire so it's like a hire to retire and what are some of the typical activities uh, involved in, uh, in in hcm or hr business process so this is not an exhaustive slide uh, it's a just uh, to give you or, or to help you understand or it's only to give you a high level overview it's not it's not uh, it this doesn't cover everything that a hcm process involves so it it usually hcm business process or the life cycle starts with a recruitment so you uh, clients will roll out a uh, post the jobs they they conduct interviews they roll out offers uh, some of them might uh, might join some of them might not and uh, whoever uh, joins the company will be onboarded into the application or or will be onboarded in the company right and they start working for you uh, they fill in the time sheets uh, time sheets with accurate information that they are or, or the time that they are spending and they get paid for what they do and that's all uh, 
uh, job means, right? So you you get onboarded, you work, and you get paid. And uh, to keep yourself up to date, uh, companies do invest in uh, in invest in uh, development, uh, developing the skills of their employees. So they get into a partnership with a number of other vendors, leading online uh, learning platforms, and they give you an option to learn new skills, pick them up, and and implement it as well. Maybe do some do some projects in internally or externally. Okay. And you also have an option uh, where an employee support the certifications of the employees as well, right? And every year you assess your employees, right? So you have, uh, maybe you want to check uh, who, who are doing, uh, who are the best among them and uh, who needs to be, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, but it's like uh, who needs an improvement. So it's, it's like you assess the employees and you put them into brackets, a uh, high performance, a uh, medium performance or low performance, performance, right? So you have a requirement to, perform the assessment it can be an yearly assessment it can be quarterly assessment or it can be an ongoing assessment as well which runs throughout the year and you do have some re rewards in case in case you want to uh, reward your employee for their performance or, or with some uh, uh, exclusive benefits maybe a bonus uh, year end bonus or or a middle of a year bonus or you want to uh, give them uh, memberships to some wellness programs right through some wellness program so all of it com comes under rewards and at the end of it, yeah, if you, you employees might retire by age, or 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 because the clients might fit, or or employees might see that they are not a fit for the company anymore. So yes, it it ends with a retire cycle, right? So if you look at a basic HCM process in any company, so it would made a it would be made up of these activities, not just these. Uh, these are only to give you a very basic or a high level overview of what's involved in HCM. Okay, human capital management. And uh, a Fusion HCM cloud application that Oracle offers has a modules to cover uh, to cover most of these uh, process that you that you that you have in the companies. Okay, so this is how uh, uh, modules in a HCM looks like. So you have a workforce deployment, development, compensation management options, and within them you've got uh, you've got the required modules. So if you look at the workforce deployment, you've got a global HR. And any client who implements a HCM, they definitely have to implement a global HR, or or sometimes people refer to this as core HR as well. But uh, on top of core HR, whether clients want to use all other modules or some of them, if they want to use time and labor and absences or time and labor absences and payroll along with HR, a core HR is something that they have to decide. So clients have, can decide which modules they want to use in addition to global HR, but without global HR, nothing is possible. HCM implementation itself is not possible because global HR is where you do the basic setups of the HCM application. And without those basic setups, you cannot even hire or manage employees. And when you don't have employees, there's, there's nothing that you can talk about in HCM, isn't it? And that's how it works. So you have the modules related to the workforce deployment and you have modules related to workforce development. Like you manage the performance goals, you perform a talent review, and you probably uh, look at the succession management, and you have the compensation management as well. So payroll comes under uh, comes under a workforce deployment, and you have some additional modules to payroll, and those come under compensation management. And uh, yes, you have some some technical skills uh, that, uh, say for example, if you take the case of fast formula, if there is something that you can. These fast formulas give gives clients a provision to plug in or to write a piece of logic in uh, in SQL kind of a uh, uh, kind of a syntax, and it gives them an option to plug it uh, or PL SQL uh, uh, syntax, not exactly the same, but it's more or less similar to it, and they can uh, write a piece of logic in there and they can plug it into the applications to make them work at the the, the way they want. So uh, say, for example, if you want to calculate the number of leads that need to be assigned to employees uh, every year based on some complex uh, logic that the clients has. So yes, absence management module, you have enough configuration options available in there, uh, which will help you to configure absence management module and make it the way, the way you want it. So if you want to assign leaves based on uh, the number of years employee has spent in a company, or if you want to, uh, yeah, if you want to do it by based on based on uh, a tenure in the organization, based on the skills or based on their designation, yeah, you do have those standard options. But if you want, uh, if you have a very complex requirement, like 
uh, if you have n number of conditions to check and uh, when those conditions are met you want a certain number of leads to be assigned in such case what you can do you can uh, probably take help from technical consultant ask him to come up with a fast formula you uh, you talk to the client get the logic from him explain him the logic he create a fast formula you go ahead and use it in the configuration and when you run the absence management process it internally refers to the fast formula and determines how many leaves needs to be assigned to employees so but this is just an example there are n number of other use cases where you can write fast formulas to uh, to achieve what you need okay and uh, yes these are the topics that we are going to cover as part of the course it's a it's a functional course uh, primarily but it also covers all the hcm related technical skills we cover these six functional modules global hr absence management payroll time and labor goals goals and performance management and we strongly believe that uh, yes uh, it will give you edge if you know the technical skills as well and and the good part with technical is yes in cloud a technical role is something that can be played uh, played by anyone uh, who who doesn't even have the technical expertise if you have to be a technical in e business suit uh, application you need to do uh, you need to know n number of uh, things you need to know uh, 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 sql pl sql workflows you need to know how to build reports and all that stuff but in the case of hcm technical yes you do build uh, so we, as part of this uh, uh, as part of the technical skills we'll show you how to load the data into application first from uh, with the help of loaders we'll show you how to report on that data like vip reports otpi reports and we'll also show you how to extract the information from the cloud application by building hcm extracts we'll show you how to write the fast formulas for customizations and we'll show you how to make use of sandbox to change the user interface of the application and we'll also show you uh, a, how you can configure the approval rules and the notifications in the fusion application so all these te technical skills yes you do not need any uh, any programming language the only place where you write uh, where you need a little bit of programming background is vip reports and that to write to write a basic select statement and that will be covered as part of the training course as well and in all other components that you see apart from vip reports and and that to in vip you just need to write a basic select statement in data model so you could basically consider this as a no code even though it says technical but uh, by the time you complete this course you would be an, a functional expert in these modules plus you also know all the technical skills uh, that a hcm consultant needs uh, to sustain in the market and if you apply for a job so if you apply for a job and say that yes i know these functional modules but you know what i also know all the technical skills that a hcm consultant need that gives you a, a definitely a extra edge over other candidates who apply for the jobs and these would help you not just for cracking the interviews but it would help you in the long run as well once you start working in the application you you have that confidence that uh, yeah when when you when you do some when you do some configuration or when you are uh, when you have a requirement to quickly pull out some information you don't have to wait for your technical consultant you know you know what you have to do to pull pull uh, to run a quick query and get the information that you need so you will feel much more confident uh, once you know these hcm technical skills and it will be uh, before i open up the session for questions it will be uh, a 45 to 50 hour course every day we'll have one hour session uh, from monday to saturday so that's like six hours of sessions per week and it will go on that day for eight weeks all the sessions will be recorded as you can see i'm also recording this session as well and you will have lifetime access to these recordings once you enroll in the course some of you have already done that uh, i will uh, send out an onboarding email and in that onboarding email you have all the details like we'll give you instance access for three months time so that you can practice along uh, what what we cover in the sessions and we do give you a uh, lifetime access to the recordings we also give you access to the ppts i've, I've used this ppt for today's session right i have a ppt uh, for for some of the sessions uh, as well uh, all those ppts or or the documents uh, relevant documents will be shared with you upon enrollment okay any questions guys any questions in what we covered today so so prashant uh, this um, 
uh, sim cloud can be installed uh, on prem also right there is an option right or it can be no. available only in cloud it can be available only in cloud earlier earlier there was an option to install fusion applications on premise but that stopped uh, four or five years back and that stopped with release 12 itself uh, starting release 13 you don't have an option to install fusion applications uh, on premise it has to be on cloud oh okay that includes fsm uh, cm everything yeah everything CMRM. yes yeah when you when, when it's a fusion applications yeah it's as a whole mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Prasad. Uh, sure. In one of the demo videos that I have seen, I just had a rush through and I uh, saw some details about the documentation from uh, Oracle. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be happy if you can share that also, you know, along with the other research. Onboarding. Share. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll include that. I'll include those URLs as well, and I'll I'll show them tomorrow in, in the session. So so you know where you have to go. Well, one more question regarding the instance. After the course is over, say roughly ten weeks, and after that, if I still want to continue using it, what is the alternate uh, that you will offer us? Like, yeah, that's okay. If it's if it's for one or two months more uh, instance access that you need, uh, I can offer it for free. But if you say like, uh, hey, Prasad, I need it for one year or two years. Then there would be a, a, a token charge involved. We can probably talk talk about it on WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, guys, from anyone else? Okay. Thank you for dialing in, guys. Uh, you can you can call me or or WhatsApp me on this number after after 10 a.m. IST. Uh, but if you if you want to talk about the enrollment process, some of you have already enrolled. And uh, I'll be sending out onboarding emails to them today evening. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time.